Hey guys, this is Mike with Mike Stickers. So I have a subscriber that on my YouTube channel that was looking at some videos and was asking me some questions about it. Um, they wanted me to go over the step and repeat process in Corel Draw. So that's what I'm going to show you all now. This is the design that I want to use, but I'm going to show you all from the very beginning process and just go through as much of it as I can. And... Um, but it's hard to cover every single step in one video and make it watchable. So I always open up, uh, I have it under RGB. I always open up 18 by 24 inch, set at 300 DPI. So here's a clean page. You would, you would import your design. I already have it copied here, so I'm just gonna paste it. So I'm gonna start fresh. Um, I'm gonna get rid of these lines but let me show y'all how I do it. I ungroup. All right, let me separate them out. The reason why I have two cut lines there is because these were, uh, it was a kiss cut uh, style, basically. Kiss cut with contour cut around the outside. So I'm just gonna get rid of these so I can show y'all how I do it. All right, so here's the design. I already have it scaled to the size that I basically want it to be. It's going to be two and a half inches. This is a little bit smaller, but it's going to work out to the size that I want. And you go ahead and go to, um, like I said, if it's not, I've told you all this before in the videos, but I'm going to go over some of the same stuff just to make sure that everyone has a chance to see it as much as possible in every video. So you go to bitmaps if it's not already. If you don't see this trace bitmap right here, then you would go to bitmaps up here and convert to bitmap, but we don't need to do that now because it's already a bitmap. So you just click on the image, go to trace bitmap. You want to go to outline trace. You either go to line art or, I mean, I think you can do several of these, but I always either do line art or high quality image. Usually nine times out of 10, I just use line art. All right, that looks good. I'm going to click OK and move this copy over. This is going to be my main image that I'm going to print. This one here is just the one that I'm going to trace around right now. So I always have this uh, contour set up over here. This is, um, if you go to objects, no, I'm sorry, you go to effects. And you go all the way down to the bottom section, and it says contour. You don't go to the one up above it. You go to the one down here, and then it'll open up this tab that you see here. Okay, so you click on the image that you want to trace. You set up how much you want to trace it over here. Um, when you change this number, it's going to change how big the line is. This is going to be so small you can't even see it. But there is a line around it. It's just so small you can't see it. Uh, it might, might not really even be much of a line where it, it's even enough to work. So if you step it up some more, you can start to see it. So this one, say you want 0 0.5. Click apply. And that's a left click. You don't do a right click on this one. And then you can right click on the edge, do break contour apart. You can separate out the, oops, there you go. You can separate out the image that you don't want to use, and then you can, you can just delete that one. And then with this one here, you can go ahead and make a copy of this one. Oops, I didn't paste it. All right, so you got two copies of it. This one is a very important step. If you're having problems where it isn't separating out the cut line from the rest of the image, this might be why. You want to come over here. You want to go to the white box that has the red line going through it. That means that there's no, it's no fill in the middle. Right now, it's solid blue in the middle, and it's your... See, I've got it the, uh, 
So I didn't even make it the cut line color yet. Okay, this is the cut line color here. Um, you're going to go ahead and fill it in solid. Then you right click over here, okay? You want to right click. I always change this to hairline. I don't think that's essential, but I do it anyways. And then now that this is hollow in the middle, there's no fill, it's going to distinguish this from the rest of the image. If you were to just take, say, this image here and just right click on it to make a blue line around the outside, see? It looks like there's a cut line there. But if I were to just simply, you know, basically send this over, oops, if I were to send this over, put it on top of this one, I'm going to put this to the back. I'm just doing this example. So basically, if I were to send this up like that and try to cut and you try to use that blue line that's there as the cut line, it wouldn't work because it, it's merged together with it. It needs to be a separate image. Um, sorry, it needs to be a separate layer. So you make that no fill. Now this blue line will act as an actual cut line. Now you see how is that point up there? We can fix that. Oops. Fix that real easy here. So you click on this one here, which can, uh, I, I don't know what all these tools are called. There you go. It's a it's a shape tool. You click on here, and then you hit delete. It's gone. Okay. So you fix that. We're gonna fix it on the other one also. It's not on the shape tool. See, it didn't want to select it. All right, delete, put it back to the select tool. I think that's what it's called, pick tool. See, I'm learning with y'all. All right, I'm gonna change this to a hairline also. You know what, I don't, I don't even need to. Okay, so I have an extra one for a reason here. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so this is your cut line. You can click on it and then hit shift and then click on your other image hit C on the keyboard for center and then E for equal and it should center it up perfectly if it doesn't then you can click on it and move it around with the arrow keys until it's perfect but I'm happy with it I showed you on a separate video how to clean up the cut lines, okay? I'm not going to show you that right now. That needs to be just a separate tutorial by itself. I have a whole separate video that's just for that, okay? So watch that video if you need to learn how to clean up the cut lines. That is essential in making sure you get a good proper cut. So you need to make sure you watch that video. All right, now with this one, what I'm going to do, if you're just going to do a normal contour cut, you could just go ahead and save it to PDF like this. And then if you're sending it to a rolling cutter, you're going to want to export it to ESP. If you're going to do a, um, if you're going to send it to your graph tech cutter, then you're going to want to uh, save it as a PDF. Now, what I want to do is I want to do a kiss cut around the outside and then a contour cut around that one. So I already have this set up here. I actually want to go ahead and save these and group them together. Okay. This one here, I'm going to make it a solid image. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this. I'm going to convert this to a bitmap. Now this is so that I can make, like I said, I'm going to make another con another cut line around the outside. So I'll make it a solid color, change it to a bitmap, do the trace around it. And go 
go ahead and delete that one now. Alright, so I want to make this one bigger. Alright, so I want to separate this out. So I'm going to right click, break contour apart. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I can delete that one. I'm going to click on this one. Now I'm going to fill it with nothing. I'm going to right click on the contour color that on the cut color that I want. Now this all right here is going to be a separate video. I haven't done it yet. I don't remember how I did all this, so I will have to search that and figure it out if I'm going to make a video. But this is the the palette for the Roland BN20 for a Roland printer. It's got specific colors. They're labeled. They have these little dots at the bottom. It says cut contour. I didn't label these. They, they're like that. Perf cut contour. This one is metallic silver, gloss, and white. So, and then they also have, I don't know if I added those or those were already in there, the white and the yellow. But anyways, and then they have no fill on all these. Um, this is the color palette from Roland. I don't remember how I downloaded that one. I would have to research and show y'all, but if you want to figure that out, you can either research it or wait till I make a video on it. Um, that's essential. You got to have that color palette to make all this happen. So anyways, I want this one to go ahead and be my contour cut, which means it's, or sorry. Yeah. Contour cut. No, not contour cut. Sorry. Perf cut. I use the wrong term sometimes, y'all. I'm sorry. It's going to be a perf cut. It's going to cut all the way through. It's going to be blue. Um, and then I want this one. I'm going to ungroup this one real quick because I need to change this one. This one's going to be the magenta color. So on this one, it's going to do, I guess, what you'd call a contour cut on here is what they're calling it. I call it a kiss cut. And then the blue line is the perf cut. So... I'm going to group these together again, these two here. So what I did there is I just selected everything and I deselected this one so I can have the two images that I, that I want together. Now I'm going to select this one, hit shift, select the other image. I'm going to hit C for center, E for, for equal. And then now I've got these that I can group together. So now when it cuts it, it's going to cut the pink line first because I'm going to tell it to do that and then it's going to cut the blue line second and that way the the cut line is nice and tight to it but then it's going to cut all the way through there so you can remove this backing or this sorry this um extra outside edge and it makes it easy for the person to peel off the sticker makes like an easy peel style sticker so now I'm going to show you how to make a whole sheet of these. Next thing I'm going to do is set up the registration marks because I want to have that as a reference point as to where to group everything. So I'm going to go up to launch and click on registration marks. I have this set up to the ones that I've just been using from day one. I'm not saying these that's the best way to do it. This is just how I do it. So the ones I'm using are GraphTech 4 point type 2. I'm putting the margin at 0 0.25 inches. These settings below that are just the factory settings that it came with. I didn't change anything there. I did select relative to page. I don't want to, I do not do downloads. Um, I'm not doing any downloads. I keep hearing about people having problems with downloads. So or you know the updated the updated stuff so I don't want to update it I click on relative to page that's gonna make the crop marks around the outside edge of the page if you don't have that it's gonna go right around the, um, the actual image and I don't really know how that works out I, I've never tried it like that so you can click on OK I'm not using barcodes barcodes doesn't um, let you use as much of the sheet and that's the main reason why I haven't been messing around with barcodes right now. Alright, so the thing with these guys is is you want to 
basically my rule of thumb and I think that the real rule kind of is that you don't want anything within this area of the crop mark oops what happened there all right so the crop marks here basically if you were to draw a box around it like this you don't want anything around this whole square okay because if if part of your image is coming inside like this right there it's going to throw off everything it's going to mess up and you're going to get misalignments you're going to get several what's going to happen is you're going to get several stickers maybe three quarters of the stickers are fine maybe all the rows up here are fine but then as you get further down the sheet they're all going to be off so you have to make sure that your image is set up so that it's not inside that box so you would move it on you could move it over here like this or I think you can move it down here you know and it could be I think like this also as long as it's not within that imaginary box but personally I keep them lined up on the top edge and make sure that it's not hitting this imaginary line what you can do is let's get rid of this one if you want to as a guide because there's you know sometimes it's hard to just eyeball it you could actually draw a line like this you could do a full box I was trying to get it one more notch over but you get the point So we'll use that as our imaginary line, our imaginary box, and just make sure that nothing is within that. See, and it's not touching it, so we should be good. Okay, so um, basically, like I said, as long as you're, <laughs> oops, sorry, what I really meant to do is put it like this. Put it at the top of it, okay? So as long as it's not touching there or over here, you're good. So you put it within here, you'll be fine. So you don't need to leave that there. I'm just using it as a guide. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. To do this step and repeat process, let me see. I don't remember where I, I originally clicked on that to open it up. I really don't remember if that was just always over there or where I found it. You're going to have to look for that because I don't remember where it's at, honestly. I always have it over there, so I don't remember. There it is, step and repeat. Under edit, step and repeat, you might have to select it so the arrow is selected. And then it'll be over here. So with step and repeat, you can make this where it repeats it over and it repeats it up. Now, I don't do it at the same time. I, I don't know. At first, I, the first time, a couple times I did this, it threw me off. I didn't understand how it worked. So, the way I do it is I put, I start off with the vertical number down here at zero. And then I put the horizontal setting, which is going to make it go across at the distance I think it should be. This image right here is almost two inches. So let's say, let's make it 2.4 inches. And let's say I want to make six more of them going across. I don't know if that's going to fit. Maybe let's do, yeah, let's try six. All right, that actually looks pretty good. You know that I'm not touching here because I already checked. So I could space them a little bit further apart if I wanted to. Because what happens is that when you're cutting, the cuts make a weak point. And if they're all bunched together, eventually the sheet could overwhelming, you know, overall between every single cut on the whole sheet becomes so weak that it starts to lose um, 
enough rigidity within the cutter that it starts to just wad up within the cutter. I've seen stuff like that happen. So um, that's another reason why you don't want to pop stickers out while it's while it's cutting until it gets down way down below that that row or above that row sorry so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select all of these now or sorry y'all hang on I said I was gonna space them out more all right so I'm gonna undo it I'm gonna go 2.5 I'm gonna use that spacing right there I'm gonna group them all together and I'm gonna move it over a little bit more. I'm using those black squares at the bottom as a reference point. So right there it looks equal. Now I'm gonna put this number at zero. I'm gonna put the vertical setting at where I want it to be. Let's see who's texting me real quick. All right, I'm going to do six going upwards also, but I'm going to space those. Let me see. These, these right here are 2.71 inches. So let's go with, let's go with, uh, let's go with 3.2 and let's see how that looks. It's a little bit too much. Go 3.0. Uh, not enough. 3.1. I think that's perfect. I'm going to hit Control A to select everything. I'm going to group them all together and I'm going to hit P to put it in the center of the page. Now, if you want to, you can confirm and make sure that you're not now within those crop marks because we did just center it and move everything but we should be good let's go ahead and drop a box over the top of it and make sure all right so let's zoom in here we're way below and we're way to the side so we're good you see that we're well within the, the margins. So get rid of this box. Go ahead and save this. Now go ahead and save it to publish PDF. Of course, I just saved it the way it was. Y'all are going to want to title it. I already have these sheets. Um, now, like I said, if you're going to be doing this for... If you're going to be doing this for just the Roland, and you're going to do everything on the Roland, oops, then you don't need to do this. You can just put it into... Um, I forget what it's called within Ro or Versa, VersaWorks and just multiply it and it's going to set it up for you. So you can just skip all that. If you're going to use VersaWorks, then you're going to want to do, you don't want all these crop marks. Um, I don't really know how to delete those. So what I'm going to do is just copy this. I'm just doing this for an example real quick. You don't have to do this part at all. All right, so let's pretend like we're just starting all over. Um, once you have this set up for VersaWorks, or set it up, and you're going to cut it in the Roland, then you would just export it. And this one, I'm in the wrong folder. All right, so you're going to want to save it as a ESP. So you're going to export 
and then change it to ESP and then hit export hit OK so then when you open up VersaWorks Nope, no updates. I have some presets here. Um, but if you were going to cut it, if you're going to print and cut within VersaWorks, then what you're going to want to do, let me open it up real quick. Let me get that one open. There's my ESP file. For this one, you, you just simply multiply it. Just say how many copies you want, and it'll put it there. So that could be your sheet there. You can look at this as a reference to how big the sheet's going to cut. Now it's going to add those big round registration marks down here at the bottom and then above it. So if this says 20 inches, it's really going to be more like 24 inches easily. So you might be able to fit in another row here. So if you do that, it'll be at least 24 inches, maybe a little bit more. Um, you actually have to pull it further out when you cut it with back in with the um, rolling machine. So as a matter of fact, it's going to be about 24 inches with the registration marks. But then it's going to be a little bit more than that because you have to have some excess on the end. So your sheet might end up being more like 26, maybe even 28 inches. When, so I don't know. You might use a little bit more vinyl whenever you're cutting with the... Uh, rolling but it's not that big of a deal but anyways that's how you do all that stuff so if y'all have any more questions just let me know i'm here to help out if there's anything i know about i'm willing to help out with it so anyways y'all take it easy thanks for watching please like share subscribe anything helps out i really do appreciate it guys thanks